court for relief, but ultimately it is judicial verdict. Siri Kapil Sibal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am sure, sir, you will for giving me this rise to the occasion of your stature. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to participate in this discussion on the 2024-25 budget. Sir, I personally believe that the economy is in deep crisis. And I will demonstrate in the short time that I have that it is so. And I thought that when the first budget for the next term of this government was to be presented, it would give us a picture as where we are and where we should be. Forgetting about allocations made to departments and sectors of the economy, what's important is what is the vision of this government to get us out of this economic morass? That's really should have been the focus in this budget. But I find that absent. Now, before I say anything, let me tell you why the economy is in crisis. We are a population of 140 crores, sir. And I have an ILO report. It's called the India Employment Paper 2024, which says that 83% of India's youths is unemployed. This is not my data. 83% of India's youth is unemployed. And in 2000, the employment was 35.2%. Unemployment was 35.2%. It increased in 2022 to 65.7%, and in 2024 to 83%. This is the state of unemployment in our country. Now, how will you deal with that? Now, unemployment is not something that happens suddenly. It happens over a period of time. And it happens, why? Because the economy is stagnant. And unemployment is related ultimately to several factors. It is related to education. It is, in turn, related to skill development, which, in turn, is related to industrial production, which, in turn, is related to GDP growth. Unless you deal with all these sections, you'll not be able to increase our unemployment rate. So this is where we are. And most of the unemployed people are in the unorganized sector. Only 10% are people who are organized in the organized sector. So the CMI data says that 79% of our population belongs to the working age group of 111 crore people out of 140 crore, of which 83% are unemployed. Now you can imagine the crisis that this country is facing. We can talk of allocations, but I would have thought that the finance minister should us give us a roadmap as to how to deal with this crisis. Unfortunately, they've not been able to provide this roadmap because they will have to generate an employment of seven to eight million people on a yearly basis for the next 30 years. How will they do that? Where is the roadmap for that? Now, every budget ultimately is a political statement, whether we presented it this side or you presented it that side. It is a political statement. And the fact of the matter is that you are strapped. The fact of the matter is that you know that unless you get two people on board, your government will not survive. So your allocations, therefore, have to be in tailor-made to the demands of those two people. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, I'm not criticizing you for that because that's the only way you will survive. Nothing wrong with that. Now, sir, in the India skill report, which is prepared by India, it says seven to eight million job seekers every year and 12 million jobs needed every year. No roadmap, no roadmap for that. 
Now, so this is one aspect. I've given you the figures. Now I come to the second aspect. The second act is, is that the world is moving in one direction and we are moving in another direction. Why do I say so? So the, as you know, the rest of the world, there is a declining population. Young people are few. The aged people far outnumber them. In order to ensure that their economy continues to grow, they have to go for artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence means that you produce the same thing not through manpower, but through machines. Now, that artificial intelligence is good for the European uh, system or the United States of America or the developed world. But in India, if you have 83% million, 83 of our people unemployed, you can't use artificial intelligence. Right? Now, if you can't use artificial intelligence, industry per se has to use it because it otherwise won't be able to compete with the rest of the world. So the, that sector of the economy, which is the IT sector, which has to use artificial intelligence, will start losing jobs. And your economic survey says that 0.3 to 0.4 job loss will take place in the IT sector. So the sector which gives you the maximum employment, because they have to compete with the rest of the world, is start going to start losing jobs. And in fact, there's been no recruitment in this year in the IT sector. So, so where the economy is actually productive, you will lose jobs. And where the economy n cannot afford artificial intelligence, you need jobs. And there is no roadmap for jobs. So this is a very serious issue that confronts this country. This is the second issue. And in fact, there is a report of the of the International Monetary Fund, which says that 60% of all jobs in the developed world will be lost. And 40% of all jobs in the rest of the world will be lost. So if the 40% of the jobs in our part of the world are lost, where are people going to get jobs? Where are you going to earn? Who is addressing this issue, sir? This country needs minds to look at issues, not at politics. You and I are together for the country, not for BJP or Congress or Samajwadi Party or some other party. So the nation comes first, sir. And unless the youth of this country, and unless you empower the youth of this country, where will our nation go? Now let me come to the third issue, which is education. So there has been actually, there has been an increase, a slight increase in the education budget. It's not right that there's been a decrease. There's a slight increase in the education budget, but it's, not, it's not, still less than 6%, which is what the promise was for a long period of time. But be that as it may, I'm not talking about education. The education structure in our country is what, sir? You get a, you get a BA honors in history, you get a BA pass degree, you get a BA honors in economics, you get a BA honors in political science, and ultimately you can't get a job. Where are those jobs? So your entire education structure has to be revitalized, reconfigurated, in order to marry it into skills. In order to marry it into skills, you need a revamp of the secondary, secondary level education system of our country. Because that's where your education system would talk, should talk about skills along with education. So that thereafter they get into the ITI system, that is the Institutes of Technology, and that in turn collaborates with industry. So industries, education, ITI to work together for absorption of young people into jobs in industry. That's the way you do it. Who's doing it, sir? Where is that roadmap in our country? What has been said by this government in the budget about these things? Nothing. Nothing at all, sir. And unless you skill our people, you're not going to, get, you're not going to give them jobs. So what will happen, sir? They all get self-employed. Centalis lakh application, Sart lakh, Sart Hajar jobs for inspectors in Uttar Pradesh. Centalis lakh application, who job, job, kya karega koi? Yuva karega kya? 
युवा को अगर जॉब नहीं मिलेगा तो फिर क्या होगा सर वो इस किस्म की पॉलिटिक्स करता है जिसका ये वर्णन कर रहे थे कि उनके पास और तो कुछ करने को है नहीं सर दो मिनट में पर मैं बैठ जाऊंगा यू लुक एट द वॉच आई मिनट्स आई ओके वन मोर मिनट बिजनेस एडवाइजरी कमिटी एट द सजेशन ऑफ द लीडर ऑफ दाउसेंड द टाइम at the suggestion of the leader of the house and everyone agreed mr derek obrain mr tiruchi shiva that to give a member 3 minutes you can, he can hardly contribute that is why i am increasing the hours since i met him in my chamber and we had settled for 10 minutes but go for 15 minutes sir go ahead so that's very kind of another 5 minutes That but after that, 5 minutes i'm sure no you'll problem, take no the problem. seat so whenever you ask i have no desire malas to board the house on the on issues malas now let me tell you another issue malas which is very important why is it important so as you know that ultimately allocations are made not by government but by finance commission the 15th finance commission made the allocations as to which state is to get how much money there's some element of politics in that but let's leave that aside the finance commission said that 41% of the revenues that are earned will go to the states right sir now what actually happened what actually happened is that the central government started to impose cess and surcharge now cess and surcharge is not allocated to the states yes right so all that comes into the kitty of the central government and the result is today sir that the central that the states are getting only 32% of the total resources that the central government gets 32% it is supposed to get 41% it is correct correct but it's getting at the moment 32% now the problem is sir that also the expenditure is monitored by the union of india my request to the finance minister through you sir is the following you cannot monitor education from delhi you cannot monitor health care from yes. delhi correct it's not possible india is such a vast country and i have been minister for hrd i know how difficult it is to monitor what is happening in arunachal will not happen in uttarakhand what's happening in uttarakhand will not happen in maharashtra you need a model for each state government as to how they want to take their children forward for god's sake give that money to the state government let them do what they like to do with education let them do what they like to do with health that's the third for third point i want to make and the last point i want to make is the following sir no country has ever progressed unless it has invested in aka and in a country like um, japan sorry um, germany other parts of the world this is the kind of expenditure on r&d that is being done india it is 47.57 billion dollars right over a population of 140 crores in israel it is 16 billion dollars in japan it is as 172 billion dollars in us it's 606 billion dollars in uh, in uh, uh, in germany it's 100, 131 billion dollars in china it is 514 billion dollars why is that sir the reason is all wealth is not created by industry it is created in the university system through what through ideas these ideas are translated into prototypes and then angel investors come invest in those prototypes they then are translated into goods and services and those goods and services ultimately sell now if you do not invest in r&d either in agriculture and that is the biggest bane of our country that you are talking about 2 lakh crore for the agricultural community 
but no real expenditure in R&D in agriculture. If you spend 100 crores in agriculture, your return will be 1,000 crores. Therefore, all wealth is created in the university system, both in the United States and in China. And here you are controlling universities. Please allow the education system to be free. Do not interfere in the education system of our country. Do not interfere. And once you, in, uh, you give enough resources to, to the university system, they will produce wealth in themselves. And that's how employment will be generated. And there are several agricultural economists in this country who have been saying this, invest in R&D in agriculture, including some of the people who have written newspaper articles recently. And what you have done in agriculture today, you have increased it by 5%, the budget by 5%. That's going to give you nothing, sir. So please free your mind from control. You want to control the politics of this country. You want to control the economy of this country. It can't happen from New Delhi. Give us freedom. Give the states freedom. Give our citizens freedom. Give our women freedom. Give our youth freedom. It's only then that India will rise and we will become a Vixit Bharat. Thank you very much. Shri Ji Ke Vasan.